In this video, we're going to be talking a bit about anxiety. Do you have it? Uh, what are the criteria that clinicians use to diagnose it? And specifically, we're going to be talking about a type of that anxiety disorder called generalized anxiety disorder. You have to remember there are many different types of anxiety disorders. Some are quite specific, uh, for example, like phobias, like a fear of heights. That's really common. But uh, in this video, it's really about generalized anxiety disorder. Of course, of course, of course, you cannot diagnose yourself with uh, any mental illness based on a YouTube video. So uh, this is more about educating and empowering you to, you know, if you see something that you identify with that's concerning and that might be causing you, you know, functional impact in your life, causing issues with your relationships, with your work, whatever, then that could be a good uh, reason for you to go talk to uh, your mental health care professional or your general practitioner or your doctor or whatever it is, uh, but maybe just uh, dig a bit deeper on that. So if all of that sounds interesting, then let's get into it. Before we begin, I'd just like to introduce myself. Hello. Uh, I'm still I'm a junior doctor working in Sydney, Australia, and in my time off, I really enjoy making YouTube videos that educate and empower people um, about their mental health and wellness. If that sounds good, then consider subscribing. Okay, let's get into it. So what's anxiety? I mean, we know what fear is. Fear is the uh, response, an emotional response to an imminent threat. Okay, it's usually a fight or flight response as well. So it's when you see the tiger and you're like, ah, do I take it on or do I get out of here? Whereas anxiety is more about the anticipation of a future threat. It's related not really to fight or flight as much as it is related to uh, muscle tension and hypervigilance. You know, these are preparatory behaviors uh, for this future threat, whatever it is. The many different anxiety disorders differ based on the uh, kind of trigger for the anxiety. Is it a social situation? Is it a specific thing like heights, as we said, or is it general, which is what we're talking about in this video? generalized anxiety disorder? Is it many different things? It's worth noting before we go into the DSM's criteria that anxiety disorders disproportionately affect females over males, so with a two to one ratio there. Uh, so twice as likely to have a, a disorder, uh, anxiety illness if you're female. Now we're gonna use the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual's criteria. I know that can be a bit tedious uh, for many people to to see it because the language isn't that accessible. That's why I make these videos to uh, try and explain what uh, the criteria are. The reason we're doing this though is because these are the criteria that mental health care professionals use to diagnose the condition. So it's important for you to understand it, especially if it's something you're concerned about. It means you can ask better questions, it means you have a deeper understanding of your situation, and that basically just means you'll be more empowered as a human. So that sounds pretty good to me. All right, let's get into the criteria. So here we are on page 222 of the DSM and we're looking at generalized anxiety disorder. And right off the bat, the first kind of dry diagnostic criterion, I guess you'd call it, is um, essentially this sense of excessive anxiety and worry that occurs more days than not for at least six months. So this is the timeline criteria. So more days than not for at least six months. If you had a bad two weeks, then that does not fulfill these criteria. This is a long standing thing, half a year at least, and for most days, right? Most of the time. And then of course, it's about a number of events or activities, okay? So it's not just, um, you know, a social situation like giving lectures. It's uh, really a variety of things. What are we gonna have for dinner? What are they gonna think about me? What am I gonna wear today? What if I'm not good enough? You know, a, a host of all these questions. There's also a sense of a lack of control of the worries and that's the second criteria. So they find it difficult to control the worry. Another thing to ask about this is, do you ever worry that you're worrying too much? I know that gets a bit met up, but like, that's a bit of a red flag. If you're so worried about everything uh, that you're wor that you're even worried about your worrying, then that's a reason to maybe talk to a therapist or a mental health care professional. And then Criterion C, uh, it's really that the kind of anxiety and worry are associated with three uh, symptoms uh, and one in children. So if it's if you're an adult, then you should have three of these. And if you're a child, it's only one, but here are a list of symptoms. So restlessness or feeling, you know, on edge, um, being easily fatigued. So being easily fatigued can be kind of like, you know, maybe you have a cup of tea with a friend, but after, you know, half an hour of conversation, you're just burnt out, right? Because there's so much going on in your mind. 
difficulty concentrating uh, and going blank. Uh, so, so you can imagine that if you just have so many concerns about so many different things that your attention is really spread thin and therefore it's hard for you to concentrate. It's hard if you're watching a TV show and you're, you know, you're thinking about all these other things, you might not be able to you might not even be able to follow the plot of the TV show. Um, obviously, if you're concerned about everything, uh, that will manifest in your kind of personality. And so irritability is a, uh, a big symptom here. Uh, and number five is muscle tension. So this is, you know how uh, a lot of massage therapists or yogis will say you have, you know, tension in, in certain parts of your body. Uh, so you should stretch those parts out. Well, they're not wrong, right? Like if you have anxiety, you do, it does manifest in physical uh, feelings and, and a lot of those feelings are tension, muscle tension. So the yogis are onto something there. And the final symptom is sleep disturbance. Uh, so it can be problems with getting to sleep or it could be waking up often in the night um, or waking up tired. So you only need three of these six things as well as the first cri two criteria. Uh, but if you're a child, you only need one of those things. As with all the DSM criteria, the, I guess you'd call it symptoms, have to be causing functional impact in your life. That means they're straining your work or relationships with your family, your friends, your uh, siblings. And of course, as we've mentioned, it can't be secondary to something else like a high thyroid state or um, drugs. Finally, and this really has to be done by a mental health professional, a psychiatrist, it can't be explained by other psychiatric diagnoses. So things like panic disorder, social anxiety, um, OCD, etc. So, uh, you know, this video is just uh, general education, but you have to go for specific um, consultation with your healthcare professional. Now, taking a step back from this criteria, it is normal to worry now and again. Uh, I mean, all of us have some levels of anxiety in our life, but if the anxiety is so severe, so common, so pervasive as to fill that criteria, that's when it is not normal. It's abnormal, it's um, pathological, it's, it's something you should do something about, whether that's talking therapies like psychotherapies uh, or if it's um, medication related, that's up to your uh, healthcare professional to uh, decide with you, of course. And so if you wanna know whether it's normal or abnormal, I guess just ask, I mean, you can use that criteria, but in a general sense, just ask yourself, um, are my worries causing problems in my life? Not what I'm worried about, but the actual worries themselves is the fact that you're always worried causing problems in your life. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, you can help the channel by just leaving the video a like. Leave a comment as well uh, if you'd like to reach out. I'll read all comments and reply to them all. And yeah, I guess that's everything. I hope you guys have an absolutely lovely day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.